All right, and there we go. No, I, uh, no, I, I heard your, I read your dream. <laughs> and that, like, that brought back the dream that I remembered. Like, I, I remember that one since I, I had it in high school and I still remember it. That's a pretty messed up dream if you remembered it's from high school. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. So, like, is it just like, you said in your message? Yeah, yeah. I had a dream that Bigfoot was trying to capture me and force me to play Twister with Anne Frank. And I was running through the woods trying to escape. That's that's really weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, sleep deprivation or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's never fun. Yeah, mine was... Um... I, I, how old was I? I was in high school. And it started with my sister running in my room. And she's, she's, hey, we're going to be late. You need to get up and get something to eat and get ready for school. So I just sort of like take her word for it. And I'm like, get, I get up and I just throw whatever clothes I can find on. And like I run in, just brush my teeth, and all this is playing out like it is in in real time. And so I grab just whatever like pop tart or something that's on the table, and we get in. Uh, we we run out the door, we get into our car, and we stop off at my friend's house because we're supposed to pick him up. Mm -hmm. And. She's getting pissed off because he's taking forever to answer his door. Well, he woke up late. And so I get him out of his uh, out of his house. And then we're driving through this trailer court that I live that we lived at. And as soon as we leave the trailer court, she's like, we're on this like long road that's heading into town. And she's passing people on the right. She's passing people on the left. Just driving like a bat out of hell. Which, uh, being as my sister, is not much of a stretch. <laughs> and on the way to school, we heard over the radio that um, there was a lottery over that was held by at the mall that you know, it's kind of close to the high school. But it was just kind of jumbled. And we get to the high school. And we're like, oh, yeah, people are, you know, there people are still running inside, so we're not too late. And I noticed that there are armed guards at the doors. Like military you know hmm. m m4a1s at the door and i'm like all right you know i'm looking at it like it's normal I'm just yeah it's a thing <laughs> and and they stop me from entering the school and they're like nope you have to report to the mall because you have won uh, the lottery and i'm like all right sweet you know, I'll see you guys later and, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, and that, I'm just kind of rummaging in like, I won something. Yay. <laughs> so I, I walk up to the mall and I go in and the mall is only like a block or so away from, it's actually like three blocks away from the school. So I go in and like they're like oh well you know we already got the other kid here so and he's already in the waiting room so you need to you know you can pick like one thing from every part of the store and you know that's your that's your price and i'm thinking that's okay you know that's pretty sweet you know we have a lot of we had like a radios uh for like an audio place that did like car stereos and stuff there. 
and you gotta hang out in this room and just blast the music as loud as you want. And then, you know, you pick out clothes in the clothing stores and eat whatever, you know, from the restaurants. And, you know, just pick out various st different stores and then do whatever. Okay. And, so, and so it was me essentially playing Mario Kart on this, like, I can only guess it was like an 80-inch screen. And I was like, I, I, I'm content with that. That works. And then they're like, okay, now we're getting ready for uh, the final thing. Um, I'm going to need you to sit in this chair, and we're going to take a blood sample from you. And I'm already thinking, like, why do they need a blood sample from me? That's kind of weird. <laughs> A little bit. Like, it went from a very happy dream to, like, a complete 180 to, like, oh, no, we're, it's going to get dark now. And so I'm like, okay, they, they put I sit in this chair, and it looks like a dentist chair. And they kind of lean you back. And all of a sudden, they, like, strap my arms and my legs down. Yep, that's not good. And I'm like, okay, this is getting weirder. And then they took this syringe and just jabbed it into my leg and just drew like it was, you know, that's how you do it. Just stab it in and pull whatever comes out out. And I'm just like, I don't think I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> yeah, I would say. And so they're like, okay, well, uh, we're we're done with uh, this part of the thing. Uh, now we're going to go to the final prize. And I go, okay, well, where do I go for that? And they're like, oh, we'll just le we'll lead you the way. And they stood me up, and then they dropped a bag over my head. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, this is just getting weirder. And they take they they took me, and I could just hear it was just. It was just darkness. I couldn't see anything. But you could still hear stuff like it was there. And I get to um, I get to this door and you can hear like you can hear the door open and it's it's just really like you can hear like old metal scraping and everything like that just one of those old storm doors type things mm -hmm. and it gets to like the top of the top of the staircase that's going up and they open that door and you can it's like one of those like one of those dreams where you can feel everything so you can feel the wind as it like as they open the door so it kind of feels like it's a real thing when it's a, clearly a dream. Yeah. And so I go up and I'm just like, what the hell are we doing? Like, and so I look at, or uh, they take me to this thing and they stop and I feel like they're messing with my head a little bit. And I'm like, okay, now I need to know what's going on here. And they're like, all right, we're ready. And they took the hood off. And it's me. And I looked over, and there's a friend of mine from my gym class who's just over, just standing a little over there. And we're on a gallow. No, oh, that's and, not good. And I'm like, all right, this is, this, this is not cool. And I look down. And you can see, like, through the parking lot, and there's, like, one of the main roads through town. And there's just everyone from high school is there. Like, everyone from the high school is just all staring up at me and my friend. And I, I looked over at the, the, the guy in the mask, and he go, what the hell's going on here? And he's like, hmm. 
And then <laughs> they they had like it was some speech that they gave. I couldn't I couldn't remember anything. And then they dropped the gallow. And as soon as the rope tightened, I woke up to my sister going, "Hey, we're gonna be late for school. You need to get going." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm not going anywhere. Fuck that shit." <laughs> Yeah, I can't blame you on that one. That's pretty messed up. Yeah, and that that dream has stuck with me since I had it. Like, you can't. That that's that's one you just can't forget. Yeah, I can see why. I've had a few weird dreams like that, but nothing that concrete. Yeah, that's pretty intense. I think the more intense your dream is, the more likely you are to remember it, at least for a little while. I think I'm going to do... this. There we go. Was it the hangout link in, ch- in the chat? <laughs> oh, so how things been? Yeah, been busy. That's about it. I was going to be on a rate prostate stream tonight, but he's doing discord. And for some reason, my computer hates discord. I've, contemplating getting discord but like it's just another thing that i'd have on my computer that i probably wouldn't use yeah exactly that that's my view on it i don't like it to begin with it's it's too complicated and it's too easy for people to find your ip address and i don't trust it some old and curmudgeonly plus it messes with some aspect of my security software and that's why it keeps screwing up on me and i really don't want to go through the hassle of trying to track down exactly what's wrong and messing with my security software yeah so i have a tech friend that does that so but yeah so i missed out on the stream today which kind of sucked but you know what are you gonna do yeah I watched part of it. Um, not much I can do while I'm at work. Yeah. <laughs> so I stopped in, said hi to Irate and Uziku Q. And that was about it. That's, That's cool. All I really had time for. <clears throat> oh. I did a stream with. Uh, Gabby G. Wiz last night. Oh, how'd that go? It was good. Um, did a bit of a BuzzFeed article and then just bullshitted the rest of the time. That's cool. So, yeah. That's about all of yesterday's news. <laughs> I'm pretty boring, so not too helpful. Yeah, it's mostly just what have other people done? And then judge them. Yeah, that's some of the best parts of life, though. Exactly. Like we were talking to, uh, I was talking to my bartender, and he is politically in the exact same spot that I am like Uh-oh. we got into a huge gun debate with this guy uh, just completely intoxicated and he was uh, we were talking about you know the AR-15s and how they aren't actually as bad as people say they are yeah. And like 
honestly, like guns scare the shit out of me. Like, and I don't even, I own one, barely use it. Um, I mean, but I'm, you know, Montana, we kind of live off of that stuff. Yeah. So it's like, that's nah, no, weird. I can see where some people have, you know, that kind of paranoia, but I can also see where it's not everyone going out, you know, like the statistics just aren't following the people who are saying, you know, AR 15s are the worst thing to everyone. It's, it's not even that good of a gun. I mean, it's okay, but I'd rather have an AK. Yeah, I have an AK airsoft gun, and that's you know that's good enough for me. I, I have a real one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I handle a lot of firearms, so I'm I'm used to it. I grew up with guns, but I understand why people that weren't raised around them get uncomfortable around them because they are incredibly dangerous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can easily accidentally hurt yourself or someone else, usually someone else. And if, if you don't know what you're doing, that's exceptionally risky. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand the obsessive fear about it, though, because, like, hammers don't jump up and beat people to death. Neither do guns. Yeah. So I think people get a little bent out of shape around the hyperbole about it. But yeah, I don't know. Um, like I've I have a gun within hand's reach of me right now. So it's, I was cleaning it earlier. What do you got? I have a Stair M9. It's a Czechoslovakian gun. Let's uh, Google that. Stair M9. No, um, no, me and my stepson were into um, airsoft guns. You know, we got, and then we got the, when we got, because he was into like military stuff way back when, uh, mainly World War II. And I mean, it was a, it was a pretty brief interest. Uh, let's see, is this screen share that? Yeah, that's my carry gun. Hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, he had, um, yeah, we pretty much got our uh, our airsoft guns based on like what we liked when we watched TV. Yeah. So like, when have you ever seen Burn Notice? Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> the dragon off at the end of the first at the end of the first or second season. Okay. Uh, I think it's the second season. Uh, he takes this X-ray of a of, an, of a dragon off uh, sniper rifle. And he's like, I want that. Like, <laughs> and and yeah, we we never even seen it. Like, there is no actual like gun that they show of the thing. It's just an X-ray of one, <laughs> and just the handle. Like, we we were both like really interested in it, and he found one that was uh, single shot, uh, automatic shot, like one and it was it was a really good gun but the body was was shit at least for the company that he bought it with yeah that'll happen and then um <clears throat> they had uh yeah it was when we when we first got like digital cable um they had we found the military channel and they had like these top 10 lists of like of guns 
of military military actual military rifles that were like like they rated the top ten ones, the best ones. Let's see. This is one of them. The AUG. Oh yeah. Yeah, I fired one of those once. It looks kind of awkward. It's very awkward. You have to... I think you. it's one of those that you have to train with. I, I didn't care for it myself. Yeah, I mean, it kind of seems... Yeah. But yeah, the like the AK forty seven, I think was the was the best one on the on the list because it was, you know, the most reliable gun on the market at the time, and even still, like one of the guys on the on the thing, he's like, if I was stuck on a desert island, uh, I'd need a hunting knife and an AK forty seven. Oh man, you can you can beat the shit out of an AK. And fire it dirty; it'll fire the grossest ammo. It's a it's a workhorse, especially if you get the Chinese made. Uh, Russian made's pretty good too, but beyond that, eh, maybe the Czechs or Austrians. But um, I, I wouldn't get anything American made, honestly, yeah. for an AK. That um, mine's Chinese, and who. You can, you can really put that thing through a, a, a quite a serious run, and it'll still work. Get it wet, fill it with dirt, whatever. It'll still shoot. That's a solid gun. Actually, this is what my stepson's look kind of look like. Oh yeah, that's cool looking. Did you get him a scope for it? Uh, no. <laughs> there won't be a single squirrel in the yard if you do. <laughs> no, we got, uh, uh, we both have, I bought him one for his birthday or Christmas. Wanted something like that. Um, uh, well, actually, no, this one I got for his birthday one year. But uh, I bought him, let's see. See if they actually have something like that. Yeah. This one looks kind of looks like the one I have, but his is like dark gray in this in this brown area. Yeah. And and this is like chrome looking. If I remember correctly. And like, yeah, all the dark areas are chrome, and this plastic area is like just like gray plastic, but it's really sweet looking. It kind of looks like this, only with like metallic, yeah. But yeah, we uh, yeah, he, he's like, he's like, how fast does this shoot? I'm like 500 feet per second. He's like, yeah, that works. So I got one that matched. That's cool. We haven't done that in a while. We'll have to do that one of these times. I bought this uh, single shot one. I don't even remember what kind it was. Um, but yeah, it was me, my stepson, and my ex were palling around, and she. She had a little machine gun one, and then he had, of course, the stronger uh, machine gun one. And I had this single shot. You had to cock it every time. Oh, and it was kind of a pain in the ass, but it was also a pretty strong one. And she popped around this corner, and I fired a shot, and you can just see it. Like so you can see the BB just aim, and then it just turns up, and then it just popped her right in the mouth. Oh, it chipped, a, it chipped a tooth. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like because oh. I mean it. It, it nailed. It was, she wasn't that far from me, but uh, it like I was laughing so hard that I couldn't <laughs> apologize. <laughs> There's no way you can apologize while laughing. <laughs> That's not possible. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, it. it sure, her tooth was fine. I mean, it didn't break anything. It just was like she had to get uh, some sort of filling. Oh, well, that sucks. While the uh, yeah, it's, but like. It was it wasn't deep enough to where it was like it was like a hole in her tooth. It was just deep enough for to where like the enamel could actually fill back in. Wow. To me, it wasn't like a direct hit to her mouth. It actually hit her lip and then hit her tooth, and then it kind of. Oh, how pissed was she? Uh, she was pretty pissed. Yeah, <laughs> like we both dropped the guns and ran over, and we're just like, "Oh, are you okay? Okay." And she's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." I'm like, "Okay, good." And then I just started laughing, and it was kind of. <laughs> yeah, uh, that looks to be about the same size as my AKS. So, is that pretty realistic on size? Um. Honestly, I've never actually held or seen one in, in, in real life, so I can't really say. Uh, you should go to a gun shop sometime, and the, the ones that have a firing range inside, they'll let you rent different types of guns most of the time. Nice. Yeah, you can play with some really cool stuff that way. Now, those, uh, I have a friend from elementary school. He's got a AR-15, and he usually goes out shooting with it regularly and I asked him you know if he if i bought the ammo if, I, if he could take me he's like can you afford the ammo so i'm like you, no but <laughs> <laughs> you'd be amazed how fast you burn through ammo it's an expensive hobby oh absolutely especially with a, a big rifle like that you're gonna blow through a ton of ammo That's definitely a child's toy right there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's hideous looking. Even that looks pretty bad. That's just hideous looking. That stock is awful. I don't know. It, it, you just don't have, unless it's, it's got to have this thing on there it, you can't yeah have... those, those folding stocks are crap that's movie stuff it, you yeah. have to be really good to hit anything like that unless you're just spraying into a crowd which is pretty horrific too yeah i don't see much difference between that and the 47 but I'm not really that well versed either, so yeah, it's it's mostly just minor cosmetic stuff. I think the caliber might I think that's a five five six. I don't remember. I haven't fired a seventy four in twenty years. I used to be more into guns, but I'm old now and just stop caring because it's too expensive. Yeah. Let's see if anyone's joined us in. Somebody was here. The likes are up to three. Yeah, someone had to at least stop by. Generous enough to drop a like and call it good. Yeah, always appreciated. Yeah, it's a very expensive hobby to do. If you want to learn, though, it's worth the investment because, yeah. you know, it, I don't know. You, 
how comfortable you are with owning a gun. But if you have one, you should learn to use it. Yeah. No, I I, I guess. Oh, I have. I only have a twenty-two. Yeah. Not really the. Uh... Hey, it's a twenty-two will kill someone just as good as a nine millimeter. It's all in yeah. where you hit them and and uh, if you hit a vital organ or whatever. But yeah. the twenty-two will bounce around inside you and do serious damage. Well, unless you get like hollow points, and then you know, then you're gonna do something. Yeah, then you're gonna ruin their day. But then that's and that's uh, uh, I think it was a Matt Christian video, Matt Christensen. He was talking about uh, why do people talk about the guns when they don't even bring up the ammo? Yeah, well, that's why the AR is looks so scary. But it's really not even the best rifle. Um, it, your rifle depends on what you want to do with it. If you're just hunting small game, any 22 rifle will work for that. If you go up against a tiger or an elephant, you'll want something much better than an AR or, or a 22 long rifle. Yeah. So it really comes down to situation. Not every weapon is the best suited for the job. So usually if I'm uh, out and about and I can't carry on my hip, I have a 22 on my ankle. So, because the ankle holsters are smaller and, well, I can't really carry a 9mm on my ankle very easily. Yeah. So it's a lot easier with jeans on to carry a little 22. And that will serve the function I need it to if the situation arises. But... Again, if there's like a rhino wandering down the street, I will run away like a little bitch. I think that goes without saying. Yeah, you'd be surprised. A lot of people have what we used to call tombstone courage because we're going to write about how courageous you were on your tombstone. Well, it couldn't be any worse than the morons that tourists here from out of state. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you heard. Let's see if I can find. I can sure I can just t- type in uh, bison, Yellowstone. Um, maybe. Oh, there it is. We have people like this. Go back to screen sharing. Oh my God. Seriously? Yes. It looked cold. People are so dumb. Yeah. And so, yeah, after they uh, they they took it to uh, he was an Australian. Were they Australian? Let's see. Yeah, it was thirty nine degrees. Which here for me is like shorts and t shirt weather. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. So like. Yeah, I think there's. It's very rare when I, like, it's very rare when I pull out the heavy coat. <laughs> like I just, I the, like, it was twenty below when I was in a hoodie. So like, I, I really don't. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty hardcore. For, I'm from Ohio, but damn, <laughs> thirty nine's cold here. It's not that cold, but it's cold. Yeah. I'd be like, it's an animal. If it was actually cold, it would be it hibernating or not in the state. Yeah, let's see. There is another. Yeah, people. You know, whenever you interfere with a, a baby, the mother will reject it. That's yeah. Uh, oh no, it gets worse. 
uh, this guy, which I think is going to be in this video, uh, was gored when he tried to take a selfie with a bison. Oh, he had that coming. Oh, this, absolutely. This commercial is terrible. <laughs> See, this is Darwinism. I haven't seen it. Like, there's one where he's just like, I wonder if this is the one. Even, even the buffalo is like, yeah, get the fuck away from me. Yeah, it's doing the like go away motions. I'm sure it's grunting at him. I mean, bison aren't really known for being that temperamental. Yeah, they're but, pretty calm animals, but yeah, that guy that guy got lucky. Yeah, idiot. And you know what? He was probably like, I don't understand. Yeah, I went to pet it and it yelled at me, like, why? <laughs> like, oh. Did, oh, did, did we it. breed out the sense of danger that people should have? Let's see if there's... Now this isn't the same one, but ah, ads. I should, I should post one of these for MSS News. <laughs> Just a, it's an oldie but a goodie. Because they, yeah, they'll charge you and they don't give a fuck. No, and they're super strong. They will plow right through your car. Look at that thing, how fast that thing's moving. Yeah, and that's a full charge. Wow. I mean, one wrong move, you're going to buy, be buying a new radiator. Hell, unless it's like half the deer here, then... Oh, yeah, here's another one. This one's a good one. Everyone's just laughing. Having a good old time. And in the tree he goes. Oh no. Yeah, like I think I'll, let's see if we can find the the meme. Let's see. Um, well, that's just wrong. <laughs> God, you just type in meme and you're screwed. Like, <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's how you get eaten. Oh, they're just big kitty cats. And 
these ones, like if you are just jogging through the woods, they'll just attack you. Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Yeah, it's that's yeah. I don't see how people can be like that that ballsy. It's almost like those people that like climb all those towers. Yeah. And, I think there's a certain level of either stupidity or death wish in there. Maybe both. Like, maybe if you're too dumb to know that you could get hurt, you're somehow immune from it. Yeah, I don't know. It's like... Uh... Ah, that's too much. <laughs> It's just irritating when, and then yeah, is they'll you'll see someone doing something like that, and then, uh, like there's these other YouTube vloggers that went off on this trail, and there's a trail that goes through like this limestone thing, and they went off trail, and took a selfie with the take a big old selfie stick and they're like yeah we just did this and we're all living for the moment <laughs> and it's like dude you just realize you just destroyed like at least 15 square foot of limestone <laughs> like wow yeah you have to have some respect for nature or you know it won't be there for anyone else Yeah, there was a um, Boy Scout troop a couple years back. The leaders knocked over this big rock that had been in there for millions of years. It was this kind of local icon, but it was blocking the trail up a little bit, and they just shoved it over, and then they got sighted, and they were all upset about it because they posted the video online of them knocking it over. Yeah. Like, well, don't do that, idiot. Uh, there was a good video from, uh, I think it was Australia, about a polar bear that attacked this lady that tried to take a picture with it. Really? Yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Can you see that? Uh, let's see. Where are we going? I think this was in Australia. See, it's got this lady by the leg. She scaled the fence because she wanted a close up with it. And it had moved closer to the the edge of the gate when it saw her coming, so she wanted to play with it. And oh, it bit her. Yeah, that's the meat of her leg. It's got in its oh, mouth. Shit. Yeah, and they're hitting it with twigs. Like that guy just grabbed some random branch and started smacking it in the face. Yeah, let's 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 pull on the lady. Let's make it better. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the theory is it's going to rip her leg off either way. If it wanted to, it could easily have just yanked her leg off. Oh, yeah. Well, but this a, is a... That's a polar bear. They don't fuck around. Yeah, and those things are huge. I mean, look at the bite capacity on that thing. The, I didn't realize how big they were until I saw a stuffed one at the zoo. Because, you know, you always see them from a distance. It's like, oh, it's pretty big. But these things are like twice the size of a brown bear. Yeah. And they are they have some real locking strength on that jaw too. It's like I, w I took my kids to the Hogel Zoo in Utah once. And like just some of the stuff that I saw there was like 
Yeah, that. I'm not gonna fuck around with these animals. Hell no. Like there was a there was one they had a silverback in there. Uh, he looked uh, fucking miserable, but I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah. How do you... Like we have a pretty kick-ass zoo down here, but man, I don't know the. I won't want to climb a fence to get closer to one of those. Yeah, like the safety fence is as close as I'll get. Yeah, like that lady lived too. She just got a few like wicked puncture marks, but no serious damage. But the thing took her shoe as a souvenir. It was playing with it for like hours. Nice. So I was going to let that play through, but you get the point, you know. Yeah. Um, no, the, when I saw, uh, we went to the, well, yeah, we went through the gorilla enclosure and there was one. Um, just lay in there, like had its arm, it was lying on its back, had its arm over its face. Just, uh, like, I'm blocking up the light with whatever I have here. <laughs> and, uh, like, the kids wanted to see it, so I just sort of tap on the glass a bit. Like, just try to get your attention. Just a little bit of attention from you. And you can see them from like you know, there's there's one like right there. I mean like there's the path that you walk and then there's the safety glass and then it's just enclosure. And you looked down, like if there was no glass there, I could have grabbed his his leg. Wow. Like he was right there. And I looked at him and I'm tapping on the screen and I'm tapping on the glass. And all of a sudden he just moves his arm, looks up at me, and then just does this eye roll like, oh, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're right there. I have proved evolution. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Because, yeah, he just, and it wasn't like, oh, it's, it's a person. He, it just, it's just this, ugh. <laughs> like, like Andy Worski plays in my head when I, when I <laughs> think of this. That's exactly what I was thinking of, too. That, ugh. But yeah, just, it was just this eye roll, and I'm like, I don't think he likes me. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, like half the pictures I tried to take at the zoo were all of animal ass. <laughs> they do that on purpose, I think. Yeah, because I'm just like, all right, you know, trying to get a picture of this elephant, and all of a sudden the elephant just turns, and I'm like, or not. <laughs> but uh, my yeah, my youngest kid, he uh, he grabbed a sloth that was climbing. Because it, it was uh, this kind of also weird, like, where you walk in and there's like little bridges and there's various animals just scattered around traveling at their own leisure. And there's like, there's a sloth just idling, idling by, you know, climbing on the drawbridge. And my son looks over and he goes, oh. It's a dog. I'm gonna pet the dog, and so <laughs> he and so he grabs the sloth by the wrist. Oh jeez! And so it goes to bite him, but because it's a sloth, <laughs> it's just this slow. Uh... <laughs> so, I, and and I have time in in when the sloth is like bringing his hand in to bite to bite my son. I have time to look at the zookeeper who's watching my son and I go, do I do anything? <laughs> like, what do I do? Like, and so he just, the zookeeper's like, eh. 
So I grab my son's wrist and I'm like, no, let let go of the sloth. And he lets go. And yeah, in that time, yeah, he was maybe still about two inches from my, my son's hand. <laughs> And you know that sloth was thinking, wow, these guys are fast. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I almost got another one. <laughs> one of these days. And so you see how it's just really kind of weird how, you know, like he had all that time to react. And then still I had to like verify with the zookeeper that I had to do something like, I'm like, it's your zoo. Like, you do something. Yeah, he'll wait till your kid gets bit. Yeah. He's not getting paid that much. Yeah, it was probably going to be one of those side clips on the store, on the new. Oh, child was bitten at a hobo zoo and a, he grabbed a sloth. <laughs> well, at least he didn't jump in the cage like that kid did with Harambe. Yeah. Oh no, that that. I wonder what that kid's thinking. Uh, he's a murderer. <laughs> like, yeah, all I want to do is get a picture with the monkey, and next thing you know, that monkey's on the ground. Ew. I I still want to shot the monkey. <laughs> that that kid. Jumped in there, knew what he was doing. Four years old or not, bad parenting. Oh, uh, I don't. Absolutely horrible parenting. Oh man, that that woman should be sued for the the life of that ape because it's a rare be creature to begin with. They should have sued for the cost of the replacement at least. But I, I hope that weighs heavily on her because that's that's bullshit. That that ape did not need to die if she'd been paying attention to her kid. But yeah, I don't yeah, feel was... bad for you know most people when they climb over barriers or stuff like that. It's a little unempathetic, maybe, but it's kind of hard to feel sorry for them. Like that video I just showed you, the polar bear. I don't feel sorry for that lady. She had to go over two barriers to get to the fence line where that thing could reach her, and you could see them in the. In the video clip, they're not, you know, small barriers. She had to climb over them to get to that cage. So I don't feel bad for her. Yeah. I, I guess that's a little mean, but. Oh, they took the video down. I, I found the uh, found the thing I was talking about with the Canadian vloggers and the. Let's see if we can bring that up. Loggers, those are some hardcore people. I I, I hate them so much. <laughs> <laughs> also, another Yellowstone story. This place attracts so many douchebags. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I've actually never been there. Let's see. Uh, Facebook posts. Uh, yeah, it's an old story, so you got these assholes. Oh, they look like douchebags. Yeah. They look like the kind of guys that would carve their names and things. You know, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. I appreciate nature. I respect it and fear its power. I, I don't think a lot of people do. Yeah, my dad was one of those types where you, uh, he's like, you got spare time. Why don't you go hike? You know, we lived. 10 miles outside of of Lincoln. 
which is a you know a town of like maybe a thousand people. Wow. And yeah, my sister's graduating class was like six. Oh my god. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, you, you, you got time to do whatever, you know, if you want to do anything, you know, with you know, playing Nintendo or something, go for a hike or something. And he would, yeah, he'd just kick me out of the house for however long. And I'd just go for a hike, you know, not thinking about anything, you know, where he could be gone for an hour and a half. And my dad's like, yeah, if he's not back in three hours, we know he's been eaten. <laughs> Yeah, my dad was like that too. <laughs> Go and, away. We'll worry you at dark. <laughs> and so yeah, like I I'd go up this mountain where you could just barely see like you could just barely see where my house is. Like it's uh oh god I'm liking again. Ugh. Like, 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 like. Okay. I gotta try and break that. I did it last night too. But yeah, he's he was one of those, you know, send you out. You, know, you can learn to do that stuff on your own. And yeah, I used to go, you know, for miles upon miles on end. And then you, know, you had to teach yourself navigation because. Heaven forbid, you know, you take a step in the wrong direction and end up in some moonshiners compound. Yeah, that's true. Which I found out there's actually quite a few of them here. Like, I did not know that. Yeah, they get a little pissy if you wander into the still, too. A lot of them booby trap it from what I hear. Yeah, I just never, I never thought there would be something like that around, just, you know, in the wood, in the middle of the woods. But yeah, I, that, I used to hike and then I'd stop at whatever fence I saw and then just turn and then go to a different direction. Well, that's a good way to get to know the area. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah they had the best sledding hills in that, in that area, though. We just, Essentially, it's a it's a one it's a one go thing. You go to the top of the mountain, you slide down, and your your day's over. <laughs> you don't need to hike the mountain again to go up there. You ever find anything really cool, like old abandoned cars or anything? Um, I did find a bunch of um skulls. Animal or human? Uh, animal. Oh, well, that that's okay then. Um, yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing too weird. Um, yeah, there's a few elk skulls and well, bones. Um, yeah, nothing real, kind of crazy. I think most of the old vehicles and stuff were my were my dad's <laughs> and they just used to sit there and just rust yeah. when I was a kid I lived in a rural area as well and uh, but we lived just outside of a town and there was a river behind our house and there was a bunch like people used to burn their trash and when it would flood, it would bring a lot of debris down. And we used to find, like, car parts all the time. And we'd build forts out of them. And one time we found a buoy, like, from the lake. Nice. And uh, somebody stole it and sold it for scrap. So they stole our abandoned buoy. We had that's, like a, that's like the Christopher Titus's... Uh... 
high school party where they stole a flag. Uh, this no, no, it's still not a flagpole. It was a power line. It was a power pole, <laughs> and they used that as a bonfire. Wow. Huh. Never found one of those. Yeah, most of the ones I went to were just pallets. Just a pile of pallets that used to they used to pour gas on and call it good. Yeah, because you could find those things everywhere back in the day. Yeah. They, they get a little more strict with those regulations now, I think. But if you know anyone that works at a factory, you'd probably be all right. Yeah, there's a place not far from one of my jobs is main office. Uh, they usually give out pallets. Like, every so often they'll give them away. That's cool. Let's see. My phone says there's only two likes, but the computer says three. I'll go by that. Yeah, I'm seeing three as well. Hmm. Oh. I take it Gabby's gone to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, there's, this is the time, oh, man, I didn't think it was that late. I should probably call the close. That's cool. I got to work at 9 tomorrow, so. Oh, wow, yeah, it's pretty late for you then. Oh, we yeah. just picked up a watcher, too. Look at that. Hi. Yeah, it says 3 on mine. Oh, we have people. Oh, they're gone. Uh, they didn't like being seen. Fine, we didn't want you to watch either. <laughs> no, it's probably just when I said we we should close down, and then they pop up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, the figure. All right. Well, yeah. We will call that a close. Cool. All Bye, right. everybody. Yeah. Bye, third person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, heck, maybe next week. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Right. Thanks for the invite, man. All right. Have a good night. You too. Which one? Oh, yeah. It's the wrong button. I am on the wrong thing. <laughs>